everyone. This is Samantha with Redefining Caregiving. Happy New Year. It's day two of the new year, and I hope that you guys have survived the holidays and that you're ready for this new year. And I have some really good news for you. The, the news that I have for you is that today I'm going to share with you how you need to go into the new year of 2022. It's all about you. Yeah, it is. Believe it or not, it's all about you. And, and when you say that out loud to yourself, just say it. It's all about me. Like when we say that, it sounds so self-centered and so negative, right? Nope, it's not. And that's why I call my teaching redefining whatever it is I'm talking about. Because so much of what we've done in the past has not worked for us today. So I would challenge you to start thinking of this year and putting yourself at the forefront of everything you do and say, it's okay because I am the leader of my life. I'm the one who's going to reap what I sow Everyone around me is going to call me responsible for what I choose to do with my life. So it really is all about you in 22. I'm not sure where the principle of nurturing children at birth ever got so distorted, but it did at one point in our history. And I can kind of guess where it happened and why it happened. But the bottom line is we started parenting our kids differently than we should have. Then what would be naturally more responsible and more and produce the most healthy type of adults in our children. And I learned this just from experience myself and being on a very painful after uh, effect of my, my parents raising me I knew that I needed to change something about my behavior, about myself, because I'd been so in so much pain over the past. My parents did not do a good job of instilling what I needed as a child, which was the basic things. We need nurturing. We need to have closeness. We have to have a bond. We have to feel like our addition to the family is a positive thing, not a negative thing. Um, and also, you also need to feel like you can trust the people who are taking care of you. So then you learn to trust yourself. And that's the process that you learn as you, you know, raise your, raise your one-year-old, two-year-old, three-year-old. And if you were raised with families or parents who said, hey, it's okay, be quiet. You don't, you don't understand what's going on or you don't have to trust your own feelings. It's okay for you to, um, you know, ignore what you're thinking and feeling. It's better not to say what you feel. You're going to grow up feeling a little confused about who you are. And you might question your purpose because you were never taught that you mattered. You weren't included. You weren't feeling like your addition to the family was a positive thing. So you question why you even were put on this planet. That is what many people feel. That's why so many people are searching for answers. If you've never had the chance or taken the opportunity to consider that you need healing, that you have been traumatized and may not even be aware of it, but you have behaviors of self-hate and self-sabotage or just negative self-esteem, you have negative self-talk. If those are things that you have on a regular basis, you really might want to stop and think about how you were parented as a kid. Uh, Starting in 2022, it is all about you because it began with you at birth and you were placed in the hands of someone who raised you up or a community that raised you up in a way that they thought you should go. And if that doesn't mix well with you now, it's your chance and your obligation, it's your role now as an adult child to take it upon yourself to instill new beliefs and behaviors. There's a lot of information on the internet. We're not going to get into that today because there's so much resource out there. If you ever want to know about how you can do this uh, step-by-step process of reclaiming your inner child, it's not a complicated thing. But it starts with you acknowledging your pain, not to feel more victim, but to be able to say goodbye to it. There's a process there, and and I can help you go through that. I'm not a psychologist, but I've been studying psychology for years. I went through the process myself. I've taught other people how to do it, and it's freed them up to live lives that they're so much better, so much more fulfilling, and no more pity partying, right? We have things that are painful in our lives, but when we are already traumatized, we tend to amplify them and really focus in on those because we've been trained to do it. So, um, and a lot of it just is because we become bitter. So what I did when I uh, went through that process is I, I felt like, you know, I was so angry at my dad. And then I grew out of it by the more I focused on myself and who I was as a little girl and taking steps to kind of write down how I felt as a kid. And through journaling, I started falling in love with myself. I mean, who couldn't 
here's a skinny little scrawny girl with blonde scraggly hair and uh you know really wanted to to look out for the underdog and i think about how i used to stick up for people and i get in trouble for it but i wasn't strong or anything i was strong mentally but i didn't know it at the time so when i decided to have a family after i'd done enough healing for myself i felt like i was capable of raising my kids better than my parents did now, now i will have a baby <laughs> and i'll be a really good mom and I thought, well, I better learn how. I mean, I, don't, I didn't have good examples as far as being a good parent in some ways, not in all ways. And I said, there's this book called Attachment Parenting by Dr. William Sears. And it was like, um, it was a, a superior mainstream parenting approach and I, at the time. And I said, I want to hear more about that. So attachment parenting is a parenting philosophy that proposes methods aiming to promote the attachment of parents an infant, not only by maximal parental empathy, keyword empathy, and responsiveness. That's another keyword. Responsiveness. Boy, those are key, those are powerful words. But also by continuous bodily closeness and touch. Wow. So I don't even remember reading that before I had my kids, but I'm reading it now, and it seems so powerful that I don't know somehow I knew that that's what they needed. And I think mothers just innately, most of us know that your baby needs those things. But it kind of goes back to, like I said, when did we stop doing this for our children? When did we stop raising up our babies that way? And here's where I think is the main, <laughs> this is it, really. It comes down to beliefs in society that were based on a person's ideas to, to try to control people more, to make more money, to have more power. And in the old days, back in the past, it generally was because men said, do this. Men said do that. And I even know when I was raising my kids, I was told by so many people, especially my husband, don't, don't respond to them when they cry. Don't go do it every single time. My sister and other people would say the same thing. Well, aren't you afraid that they're going to get spoiled? And I'm like, I don't understand if you guys know what spoiled means. The, the, the definition of spoiled is probably like this. I'm leaving something in the refrigerator and I'm not tending to it, so it spoils. Not, I'm going into the refrigerator to look up my cheese date, expiration date, and keeping it in check, keeping the temperature good, making sure that, um, you know, it's sealed up properly, and that, you know, I eat it up before it expires. I mean, that to me is like the opposite. So when they'd say that to me, and I'd say no. And inside his book, he actually wrote that, that the definition of spoiling a kid is when you don't tend to its needs. Now, you cannot love a kid too much. You can... You can make excuses for a kid. You can you cannot teach them responsibility, but that has nothing to do with love. Love is unconditional. Okay, uh, it takes an awful lot of intentional. I don't know, changing who you are to be the best parent for your kid, but it takes a lot of intention to do that because we have so much conditioning. But when it comes down to it, moms know. I mean. Deep inside, they feel the draw to, to breastfeed their babies, to nurture their babies, to go to them when they cry. It even hurts them physically sometimes to hear a baby cry. Even if I'm in the store, I hear a baby cry. I want to go pick it up, you know? And so if I do that for my own kids, why can't I do it for myself? Because after all, I'm just a kid who grew up just like you. You grew up. And then who's going to take care of you? You. But who taught you how? Hmm. I don't know for you who it is for you, who it was for you. Are you happy with the way they parented you? Because you're living with that now. And you have every opportunity. In fact, it's your obligation to do it for yourself. Because the definition of good parenting is the art and skill of raising children in the best way possible by providing their physical and emotional needs from infancy all through adult. Now, that's not my definition. That's on the internet. I've read it. It keeps on coming back to me. A parent does not necessarily refer to a biological life giver of a child. So in other words, you can parent yourself. You didn't give birth to yourself, but you can be the parent to yourself because you're still, you're in adulthood. Are your parents doing it for you now? Did they raise you up in a way so you would go into adulthood <clears throat> loving yourself and being a great provider for yourself? And, and remember what that was of, to be providing for yourself means you have to have empathy for yourself. Remember the word? responsiveness for yourself, and also number three, continuous bodily closeness and touch. Are you doing those things for yourself on a daily basis as if you were a child? 
here's where I really want to challenge you. It's going to be almost like, it's almost like running backwards. Have you ever tried running backwards? It's kind of scary. And also you feel like you could fall on your face. <laughs> but you know, in this case, what's the worst thing is going to happen? You're already not maybe showing yourself empathy. You're probably already falling down quite a bit in pain. You're not, maybe you're not being responsive to your needs. Maybe you're working a job that you hate. Maybe you are being a parent that you don't want to be because someone's putting you in a position to be with something other than what you want to be. Maybe you're overweight or underweight and trying too hard to be someone else other than yourself. Is that how you would want your parents to have raised you? Like you can start over. You can start by this. The first three things. These are the top three things. Write them down on a piece of paper. Are you showing empathy towards yourself on a regular basis? Are you being responsive to whatever your needs are? Are you being hard on yourself when you can't do everything that everyone expects you to? Or are, when you're tired, are you sleeping? Are you, con are you in a continuous bodily closeness and touch with your body? Are you doing that every day? Massage, sex, any of those things that cause you to feel pleasure? Or when you have pain, are you listening to the pain? Or are you ignoring it? I'm not judging you because I've been doing this for years. <laughs> I giggle because I've been doing the same thing for years. But the difference is I know the three things. And I have practice and practice. And over time, it's become so easy for me to easily get on here and tell you guys that you're 22 is all about you. I mean, who says that, right? Not very many people walk around boldly feeling, in fact, that it's a fact. And I know you will too if you practice these things. Just go look it up, okay? Because this is really how you need to start the year 2022 parenting yourself because you are responsible since your parents aren't around anymore. It says uh, good parenting results in kids who are, have positive self-esteem. Uh, good parenting results in kids who love themselves and love other people. They, they see the, uh, the needs of other people and want to help them. They want to live in a community. They don't want to dominate. They want to be friendly. They want to be kind. So if you want that for yourself, you have to give it to yourself. Okay. So if you haven't had that experience of having parents who gave you all those great things to go on to adulthood with, even if you're just missing out on a few, you can do it for yourself. So start this new year in 22, make it all about you, and remember to include yourself in the care you give, not only by just once in a while eating a meal when you're supposed to or going to bed on time. One of the things that we do every day is we just kind of fall back into our patterns. I mean... If you put a picture on the wall next to your bed of yourself as a child, it could help reignite you back to that child. I did that. I framed a picture of myself. Um, and it was a picture that <laughs> it's kind of a funny little picture because I look so cute because I'm pouty, but it's black and white and my hair's all styled and everything. And I was like two, I think, or three. And my mom said, you were crying so hard. And then you stopped crying and we got the picture and it was so cute. And I'm thinking... I was crying real hard. And then you took the picture afterwards. <laughs> like, I don't know. I, I, forcing kids to do things, it never works, people. I mean, really, that's what my mom did or my parents did. And a lot of times we just give in to pressure. Like, I'm sure the photographer could have been sitting there saying, oh, she'll be fine. She'll be fine. Just set her up there. She'll be fine. And, and instead, here's what I did with my kids. I, I take them off the chair and say, what's going on? And they, I don't want to. I say, well... You don't have to. Like maybe it's not mandatory they have a picture taken that day. Or you know your kid enough to know that if you stood behind them and held their hand, they'd be fine. There's all kinds of ways to get around it other than forcing it. <laughs> but I just want you guys to know your little self inside, the voice you hear, you should listen to it. Okay? Go into 22 and trust your gut. And, and just take that little baby and that child of who you used to be, who's still in there, waiting to be heard. Okay, guys, I really appreciate you listening. If you ever want a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me, I'm happy to help you. I really look forward to anyone who calls me, even if you just have feedback about the show. I'm actually working on a um, YouTube video where I'm pr promoting the podcast, and I will have it on YouTube within the next couple days, and I'll provide the link below. And I'll also provide you with some of the attachment parenting 
and uh, self-love, you know, uh, articles that I've read that helped me a lot. And you guys are worthy of 2022 being all about you. And don't give in to the stress. Give in to yourself. Okay, bye-bye for now.